Hey guys, welcome back to the call room with Ed Baxter today. So we should have a good uh, episode when Ed arrives. Um, so yeah, hopefully, ah, I think Ed, Ed is in, so hopefully we'll be able to add him here. There we go. Hopefully we'll be here in a second. Nice to see everyone. Thanks for joining. We're just waiting for... Oh. Ah, there we okay. go. All right. Hey Ed, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. Thanks you. Yeah, not bad. Not I've, bad. I've you always uh, you always seem well. busy, so it's nice to catch you. To be honest. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I've not been on one of these before. I was hovering over my phone for last five minutes waiting to join. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good that you're finally in here with us. Yeah. You all right? You all right? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Really nice to have you. Um, everyone, this is Ed Baxter. Uh, obviously, as you've seen from the posting and stuff. Um, I just want Ed to, to sort of introduce himself, really, and tell you guys a bit about himself, because he's uh, <laughs> got a pretty good story so far. So, take um, it away, Ed. Yeah, so I I guess, um, as a swimmer, I've swam all my life. You know, I started swimming when I was six. I joined the club, I think. Um, I then I swam at Cockmouth, which is a tiny club up in Cumbria. So, it's just below Scotland. So, I swam there until I was about 17, I think I was. Um, it was a tiny, tiny club, and all the coaches were voluntary. So, you know, there was no one paid, and um, uh, our coach just said, "Look, if, if you kind of want to progress a little bit more, we need to start looking around at, at some other places to go." So, um, we tried Stockport, where I know you trained out for a while, Lauren. Um, we spoke to a couple of other clubs, um, and then I tried out with um, Mel Marshall um, at Dar City of Derby, which she was at the time, um, uh, where Adam Pete was training at the time as well with Mel. And, you know, I, I instantly clicked with Mel. There was something about her that just, I, I just wanted to be coached by her. Um, and the first weekend I was down there, we'd, I'd gone down with Luke Greenbank, who I also trained with in Cockmouth. And she said, do you want to come to Australia for six weeks in January uh, for a training camp? And I was like, well, <laughs> I'm going to know. Do you know what I mean? If you do six weeks with someone, you're going to know if you want to be with them for the next how many years. Um, you know, when, you're, when your goal is going to the Olympics and winning Olympic Games, you know, you think, well, I'm going to know after six weeks who I want to be with. So um, we went there and then um, I, I had a really good junior career, finishing my last kind of junior bit with Mel. Um, I had a really tough few years going from junior into senior. I know a lot of athletes do, but I think especially for lads in breaststroke in this country, it's, it can be quite hard. Um, you know, when there's, you know, there's four guys who have either, you know, broken world records or they've been to the Olympics before you, you can even get a sniff at a, a place and two of them already have to miss out so I had a really tough time when I was trying to transition from junior to senior um, I, I started some coaching thanks to Mel she kind of put, pushed me to do a little bit of coaching I've, I've always loved like just absolutely passionate about swimming um, and I, I lost that passion for a few years um, but thanks to Mel for pushing me into coaching um, I started my own coaching business and that's kind of grew and grew and that's where our passion is now um, I, I would do a lot of work with Adam um, and I kind of manage his stuff in terms of how he wants to inspire the next generation of swimmers and what we want to do in, in terms of leaving a legacy for him and how we can you know, reach as many different swimmers as we can. And at the start of lockdown, I decided to kind of park my swimming career. I'd always intended to go until after Tokyo and I kind of promised Adam and Mel that I'd do that, that four-year journey with them. Um, but when it was, you know, when it was kind of ticking over and, and it was going another year, you know, business was really flying and I'm thinking, you know, I'm, my, the passion for me personally swimming isn't, isn't there anymore. Um, am I holding myself back in, in another area of my life? And I'm so, um, I'm all or nothing. I'm not going to do something half-heartedly. So, you know, when it was, this is suffering because I'm putting 100 into this that realistically I'm not getting 100 out of, you know, for me it was, it was a natural time to kind of just call it a day. But yeah, that's where I'm at now. Um, and I, uh, I I coach with Mel now as well. When I stop swimming, she's she hasn't got an assistant, and she's got nine swimmers in her group. All doesn't sound like a lot. I know for everyone, who's, <laughs> people are watching. They're like, oh, I'm in a lane of nine, ten people. Um, you know, for senior athletes, you know, when you've got one coach and nine nine swimmers, when they're all on a different plan, they're all on something individual. You you obviously know what it's like, Lauren. Like a two hundred backstroke might be on something completely different to a hundred backstroke that day. So she didn't have an assistant. She said, would I mind? Um, helping her which obviously I was I was quite honoured that she asked me so I work alongside Mel uh, as, as her assistant so while she's at ISL I've been managing some of her guys in Loughborough and then yeah just just doing my own thing really. Yeah no it's it's really good to see um, and I think that's something that 
like there's always when people finish swimming or any sport i think they go one of two ways they go i never want to do anything yeah, to do with it again that's, that's, what I thought I'd be like. that's it <laughs> yeah and then you've got the other side who are really passionate about it and and you know i fall into that category as well yeah. so it's yeah. lovely to see and there's a few things in there that you've already touched on that would will be really interesting to dive into a bit more in a bit um yeah. but yeah no like fantastic journey so far like you said and and some interesting relationships as well um you know with your coach and, and adam and stuff like that um but this is about you um <laughs> so the first question that i like to ask everyone that comes on is okay. what kind of core room athlete are you um and while i give you a second to think about that uh, I'll just explain to people watching uh, the core room is the room that athletes go to before they compete um, to get physically and mentally in the best shape possible to go out and perform as best as they can. So there's loads of different types of athletes um, and people deal with it differently. And Ed is just about to tell us how he <laughs> deals with it and what he's like in the core room. Um, I think I was probably, I've always been the same. I, don't, I think people go change, don't they? Some people like, like to have a bit of a laugh or whatever i think i've always yeah. been quite quite head on I, I don't i don't know about you but i'm sure you're a bit of a laugh i bet you had a laugh in the core room didn't you i was a laugh i was <laughs> definitely a laugh <laughs> if, if it was a less serious event like if i was doing im or if i was doing something that wasn't my main event i was breaststroker um i'd have a laugh i wouldn't have my headphones on really I'd, I'd talk to you know if i had some friends in the core room but if it was my main event um i would be 100 percent. i wouldn't be talking i wouldn't you know there'd be people in the core room i've known four or five years who I'd say hello to, I'd give him a fist bump on the way out or whatever, but, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really speak to anyone. But um, for me, like racing and, and that moment was, was, uh, I don't know, it was some, it was where I kind of put everything into. Um, my, like, as, like, as I said to you earlier, my passion is swimming, that's what it's always been. And for me, you know, going out to race is what I, is what I feel like I was born to do, is what I just love doing, is, is that feeling of, is it going to go, is it going to go well, is it going to go bad, um, whatever whatever happens in there is a result of what I've done. And it's, that's, that's my ownership. So I just love that moment of, you know, five, 10 minutes before I'm thinking, right, this is me. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to think about what I want to think. And this is where I kind of, um, it's, it's where I laid my emotion down. Uh, I've, you know, what, if good things have happened, if bad things have happened, that's, I put it into a pool. So I like to have that time for myself in the courtroom for sure. Oh, brilliant. So are you big headphones or just in the zone? Didn't have anything on. Big headphones, 100%. Big headphones. <laughs> yeah, always. I Big headphones. Always. Okay, I get that. Yeah, I get that. Um, so we're going to go into some quick fire questions now. Um, yeah. So don't overthink <laughs> it. Don't need to give me a big answer. Just yeah. either or, basically. Uh, so yeah. race outdoors or race indoors? Indoors. Uh, kick or pull? Pull. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tea or coffee? Oh, tea a year ago, coffee now. Okay. Um, circuit or weights? Whoa. Oh, uh, circuit. Ah, I thought you'd be weights straight away. Uh, That's interesting. Okay. No, I, I love, I love like 30 minutes oh, as you can. Just like sweat as much yeah. as you can. Just get like proper yeah. I love that. I get that. I get that. Um, aisle or window seat? Uh, aisle. Chocolate or sweets? Uh, sweets. Morning training or afternoon training? Morning. Individual bronze or relay gold? Oh, uh, oh I always <laughs> ask people this question as well, and I don't even know the answer. Um, Come on. Relay gold. Okay. Uh, are you a racer or a trainer? Ooh, uh, trainer. Okay. Uh, would you rather be the funniest in the room or the smartest in the room? Smartest. Movies or TV series? TV. What's your favourite pool in the UK? Uh, training or racing? Uh, racing. Well, uh, yeah, London. London. Super, London? Super, super question for me. <laughs> uh, and what's your favourite pool in the world? Would it still be London or uh, is there somewhere? No. Uh, Rome. Okay. Yeah, I, I, okay. have you been to that one? I haven't been to that one, oh, but I've heard good things. When when I was thinking about stopping swimming, that was the one meet I said that I wanted to do again before I stopped. It was like really, it's like I've been to so many pools around the world, but like it was the first one I'd seen that like I was like, oh my god, that is insane. 
Um, really? I think it's just how it's like, I was set down, it's like an arena. Like, I, I honestly, I saw it, I was like, oh my God, that is insane. <laughs> oh, you make me jealous now. Maybe I need to go back. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> um, all right, Ed, so we're going to start. Uh, the first question is, why swimming? Why, um, why swimming? Oh, really good question. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I've, I, did loads <laughs> I did loads, but I think um, it's it's just you just do it or you don't. Do you know what I mean? I don't think many people do it half heartedly. Um, and I started swimming, and I just I guess I just loved it. You know, I can't remember I I can't remember much of my childhood to be fair, but I I just know that I must have loved it. Um, I was really really lazy, like for so many years, <laughs> and suddenly I, I guess it was probably about the time you were at Stockport um, when everyone in my club just just started like swimming so fast um and uh you know lucy was swimming fast anna uh, luke uh, oliver mm -hmm. everyone was popping up and i was like well, i was like I, hold I, on I need to be involved <laughs> in this yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and it, honestly it's so cliche but i just had a day where i switched and i nice. honestly can never say that from that day i've not put 110 percent into the pool or the gym or whatever it was and i just loved it i loved the graft um i felt like swimming was a really good reflection of uh, how you work if you train really hard if you're in a good um, you know if you're in a good mindset and and you're happy you swim well if something was a little bit off you didn't um, I love yeah. the not not simplicity of it because it's quite complicated still but I, I love that idea of you know it's, it's all on you pretty much mm -hmm. yeah I know I get that because it is simple but also there's a lot to it so it's yeah. like it's, yeah, it's hard to it. explain Mm. It's one of those things where if you're in it, you can't explain to someone out of it, but you have to be in it to get it. Yeah, for sure. If that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> um, someone just asked uh, on the chat there, so I don't want to miss that question. Um, what age did you specialise uh, into your event? Uh, I know I broke a county record when I was nine in a 200 breast, but I, I've raced everything until I remember when we used to do counties, um, we used to do every single event. It was junior finals, senior finals, we did them all. And we do like 40, 40 swims in two, three weekends. So we, we didn't stop that till we were 17, 18. Uh, but I was, I was always good at breaststroke. I was, that was the only, like, it was the only thing I could really do. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, Jimmy's, Jimmy guys just asked, have you had dinner? <laughs> of course he has. Get back to racing. <laughs> Um, okay, so I've got a question here. This is uh, going into a bit of a deeper side of it, but what's been the lowest career career moment you've had? Oh, um, there's only one. <laughs> no, there's, there's only one. There's been one that like, kind of really um, stuck yeah. me. Um, I'll, I'll kind of set the scene for you. <laughs> um, I, I think I was put onto the world-class programme when I was 16. So for those who are watching, it's where you basically British women say we're going to pay you to swim as we think you're a, a medal potential for an Olympics, uh, Olympic Games. Um, when I was 16, there was two guys who were older than me, way bigger than me. I'm not a tall guy, but when I was 16, I was way shorter than I was now. I was probably like five foot five. Um, and I was, you know, I, I wasn't the fastest by any means. You know, they were a couple of seconds ahead of me. And like I said to you, like, I've always been a grafter. I'll always put 100% in. And I got closer to them the next year when I was 17. And when I was 18, I just missed the World Championships um, on a 200 pressure. I say just. If I'd done my second or third 50 again on the last 50, I'd have made the team. But I didn't. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so I wasn't close. But um, relatively, I, you know, I swam really well. I, was, I think I was the fourth fastest ever behind Adam. Andrew Willis, who came fourth at the Olympics. And then another guy who's a really good junior. And that was the first year that I'd gone past everyone who was older than me, who was bigger than me. That was kind of my year that I jumped ahead of everyone. Um, and that was in April I went that time I got um, I was training amazing all the way through towards the summer meet and I went to that road meet as we were talking about earlier and I got really really ill um, and that was like late June came home and uh, spent two weeks in bed and oh. I, think, I think I lost five kilos of which were all muscle um, mm. when we did when we did the skin folds I think it was all lean muscle I'd lost um, and that was that was four weeks before our main competition. So I got straight back in for two weeks training, um, and I went two seconds slower than I'd gone in April. So I got out of the pool. I was thinking I've I've literally been on my deathbed here. I've had two weeks training. I've gone two seconds slower than I went in April. I was like, I'm I'm so happy. I was like, I didn't think I was going to be able to race. You know, I'm I'm absolutely buzzing here. 
all the lads who I'd beaten in April was slower than I was again in summer. So I'd, I'd still beaten them. Um, and, you know, we had our summer break or whatever. I spoke to the guys, British Women, the, the guys are in charge of our kind of development age and said, look, this is what I, this is what's happened. You know, we've got all the data. We do we do uh, an app mm-hmm. every single morning when we wake up to how well we slept, you know, everything like that. And they've got so much data on us. I said, look, we can check. We track my weight every single day. Um, and came back for, this, for the season. And part of me was kind of expecting not to be on the World Class Programme again. You know, I'd gone slower in the summer, which, as you know, is one of their big things is to get faster from April to summer. So I thought, you know, that's, that's probably me gone. But I beat everyone else. Like, they're older than me. They're way taller than me. I've, I've beaten everyone. So, you know, if, if I'm off, they're also off. So we're all kind of in the same boat. Um, and there was four of us um, around that age group also on the similar events. Uh, and I, I remember I got my letter to say, um, well, to be fair, Mel called me and said, I've just been in the planning meeting. I wanted to let you know from me because I know this is going to really hurt. Um, you, you're not on the programme this year. I was like, I said, you know what, Mel, like, thank you for letting me know. But I, I know, can, I kind of expected it. Text all the lads. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm absolutely gutted. Like, uh, I hope you lads got on. Um, got a text back from one. Yeah, I'm on. Text back from another. No, I'm still on. Text back from another. Oh, I'm still on. And I, I'm like, hold on a second. You've, you know, you've paid me for two years with the, with the idea that I'm, uh, I've got a medical potential. Um, I was behind these guys. The one year I've got quicker, the one year, you know, I've kind of really popped out and, and I've had a really good swim is the year that you decide that suddenly they're, they're all better than me, even though they're slower, which is the way I saw it. You know, I was only 18 years old at the time. Um, I remember I had, um, I, I put together, you know, you can appeal a, a funding decision you can take um british women to court which I, I put together an appeal and decided not to because i didn't want to um affect anything with with mel's relationship with british women and, and my own relationship i'd still been given a place to train in the national center which i was really grateful for but i was just not being paid um and you know i'm from a single parent background my mom can't work because my younger brother's disabled so you know to me that funding was what meant I could swim. Um, so that was, that was really, really tough. Um, I remember I sat in a planning meeting um, with them and I said, look, I, I just don't get the logic here. Like, where, where is this coming from? I look at it from every single angle. And how, how is this the decision you've made? And they got out this huge book and they kind of opened it and said, this is all the data we've got on you and, and all your our predictions for where you go kind of thing. And it goes, okay. And there was a bar that said 170 to 180 and each number was a number within it uh, and they were all in red and I was like oh and they said do you know what this is I was like no and 174 was circled and they were like this is this is where you are in, in height wise um, so I was 174 centimetres at the time uh, and then they turned over the page and it went from 180 to 190 the numbers went from red to orange to green and they said and then there was a number circle and it said this is the average height of a 200 breaststroker I was like hold on a second right. so you have faced this whole decision off the fact that I'm shorter than the three guys I'm racing. I've beaten them at the two meets you've asked me to beat them at. And I'm the one out of the four you've decided to take off. Um, I did, I'm quite an outspoken person, especially 18 year old. I had quite a few choice words. Uh, yeah. But, you know, following that, um, you know, oh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Right. <laughs> Go for it. Um, but yeah, you know, for me, you know, when, like I said to you, um, swimming was all I ever had. That was my passion. That's all I ever wanted to do. You know, to, and, and I feel like I dedicate my life to it, which I had. And, I, you know, they've ripped it away from me. Uh, yes, they still provided me with a place in the centre to train. But like I said, I wasn't from a, from a background where I could kind of just swim and, and have my, my mum kind of help me to just keep swimming. So that put me in a really difficult position. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to find some sport to be able to keep swimming. But, you know, when when a decision is made like that, that you have no control over, it I was it really, really put me in, in a really hard place. You know, that's all I loved. Swimming was the only thing I loved. And for someone to rip it away, not rip it away from you, but take everything you'd worked away from you was, yeah. was very hard. Um, every single meet, those guys stopped swimming quite a while before I did. Every single meet we ever swam again, I was faster than them. Um, they continued to get funding. We all got slower. Um, but I, I, you know, like I said there, I swam so fast in April. I, I got really unlucky. I got really ill. And then, mm-hmm. you know, that was meant to be it for me. I was meant to kind of take, take off. You know, I was only 18. I felt like I'd, I had the best coach in the world. I had the best training group in the world. And I, I felt like everything was right for me. Um, but because of 
that mindset that pushed me towards and, and the way that made me feel is, you know, my, my performance just went completely downhill. And like I said, that's what I, that's what I identified myself as. I was, I was a swimmer, I was an athlete, and I was someone that, that I had typically over the last two, three years, you know, raced really well um, and, and was on kind of people's radars. But that was really hard. That was really, really tough. Um, that was by far the hardest, hardest experience, I think, living swimming. I mean, yeah, I can, I can imagine. And, you know, there's so much stuff in there that from your story and that, that bit alone that you've just said um, over that, that period that would help people just talking to them about. Um, it's interesting, you know, there's loads of things that you, when you were talking then that I thought, gosh, you know, and I could have chipped in and stuff. But I wanted you to talk a lot, you know, just and just talk about what you've done and, and sort of how it went because there's so many people that are watching that will be able to relate to, mm. to your situation and similar things. And it's sport can be brutal, you know, it's not an easy journey. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and what shows in, in your journey, I, you know, I like to believe everything happens for a reason, whether it does mm. or not, I don't know, but it helps yeah. me a lot. And I think from what you're doing now, that happened to help fuel what you're doing now. Yeah. I like to think that. And um, and what you do now is fantastic. You know, I see it on social media and stuff like that. And and you're absolutely flying. And I hope hopefully it's just going to keep going up and up and up. I hope so. <laughs> um, that's all right. No, I, I genuinely mean it. And I think you know it's it's not easy. And and there's a few things in there that people probably didn't know about. That really, you know, there's so much respect for. And you know, you do yeah, work hard. And it's, you're it's something that's not really talked about. And like I said, I was really grateful that I'd still been given the opportunity to train in, in a national center and you know with that i know there's you know being in that center is still costs them money for you to be there um but you know when like i said to you when you're trying to support yourself to swim you, you're not from a from a background that, that means you can do that you know when that's taken it's like you know, all right then. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, why, yeah, why, yeah. why spend two three years you know funding me if if you're then going to say oh it's, that's it do you know what i mean mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we've got Adam here saying all sorts of stuff, chocolate and this and that. Um, but sp speaking of speaking of Adam, and you've you've mentioned that you know breaststroke in Britain at that age and just above and stuff like that. Yeah. It was absolutely. It's probably the worst time for you to be a breaststroker. <laughs> Literally. Um, yeah. well, it was thanks for that, Adam. Thing. He's just said hey. Thanks for that. Um, um, how did you deal with that, Ed? How did you deal with knowing that? Um, I think. When, when I was at my best, I was, you know, like I said, I was only 18. And I was thinking, you know, two more years and I've only got to take off two, three seconds on my best event. And like I said, if I'd just gone that second or third 50 again when I got my best time and I made the world team that year, and you think, would that one race have changed the whole thing? You know, if, I'd, if that had gone right, you know, would that have meant that I'd gone to the Worlds and I was 18? And would that have been like, oh my God, I'm so, so confident off the back of that? Um, you know, would that have changed everything? But... Um, like I said there, you know, if you get two spaces for a team, you've got obviously Adam, who's a world record holder. Um, you've got Ross, who's a Commonwealth champion, British record holder on my event. Benson, who's been to two Olympics. And then you've got Wilby, who's over the last few years just started to absolutely fly. And he's a four fast ever, I think. And you think, right, so two of these guys have got to miss out. And then I might get a shot. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Which is, which is pretty crazy. Um, but I was always positive, like, do you know what I mean? It was, I was quite fortunate that it wasn't just an event that I could kind of just get selected for. I quite liked to chase. I loved having to, to hump something and nothing was nothing was given there. Like, you know, if I was a tiny bit quicker, I'd have probably just managed to scrape on the team if I was in an event that would have, you know, that there was a, a slower event. But I think I was quite fortunate that I had to always chase something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. And you've mentioned Mel a few times and obviously you could see it was evident that you had a great relationship with Mel and your teammates. Mm. Um, and you know you were all of you were just going for one goal and, and it was brilliant to see yeah um, I, so... I said as soon as I'd started training with Mel full time I always said that I wouldn't be coached by anyone else um, really it was just like, like the, the mentality and like the group we had was amazing like like I said I trained with Luke at Cockmus and we boot, moved to Derby together so we trained together since we were eight and then the kind of group of there was me Luke Adam Sarah Basie and Harriet Cooper who's uh, stopped a couple of years ago now, but we all went from Derby together to Loughborough together. And then a few people came into a group and then dropped out. But it was always kind of a few of us that always stayed. And like, if you look at Mel's group now, there's still Adam, Luke, Sarah, and then me on poolside now with her. So there's still four of us there, which, um, 
you know, that, that journey is something that I never wanted to kind of leave. I always wanted to be surrounded by those guys. I love working with them. Um, and, yeah. and we're all kind of set on one goal. Yeah, and, and it's great. And if you've got something like that that's special, then absolutely stick with it. Um, we're going to move on now to the highest moment in your career because we can't do the lowest, not the oh, highest. Um, when I was 20, um, so I'd gone through that phase and that lasted about a year and that was really hard. Um, and then I started coaching. Um, I'd, basically, what happened, I'd worked Mel Summer Camp in 2018 and at the end of the camp, she <laughs> or everyone was leaving someone came over to her and said do you do any one-to-one -one coaching uh she said no she grabbed my arm and said but ed does ed's, ed's starting out uh the sessions are 45 pound an hour they're at repton here's his number they're on su sunday afternoon drop my text and we'll book you in and she left and i kind of looked i was like what man what are you doing she's like you love swimming you've always loved swimming it's a passion you'd be amazing at this um just just do it and that was in the summer of 2018 so i started doing that and, and things started taking off and, you know, I changed my training style a little bit. I'd gone to doing a lot of meters. I was swimming like 65K a week, which is something I don't think many people enjoy, but I responded really well off it. And I was, I was racing really well. I was training really well. And I went 206 short course in December 2018. And for me, uh, I think I was the fourth fastest ever of an English person. I don't know if it is, it is anymore because um, I don't think Adam had done one um, recently. I, think I, might be <laughs> I was just going to say... But I was just um, going to say it, but anyone watching that's not a swimmer, that is quick. Uh, um, that is um, moving again. Uh, so. um, but yeah, like that for me, you know, after the period of when they said, no, you're, you're not going to swim. Um, like, as, as you know, short courses is, is typically for people who are bigger and, and stronger and heavier. Um, cause they, get, they get more, more of the walls, more of the dive. You know, uh, going that time was, was quite nice for me because um, it was a bit like, a, I don't want to say what was, I thought it was. Uh, but it was a bit like, actually, um, <laughs> uh, th this is me. Um, I, remember, yes. I remember I texted um, a few of my family who had like, really, really supported me through that hard time. I said, like, I'd, I'd done this in the morning and I knew that I was going to swim quite fast. And I just texted and I was just like, this isn't, this isn't for me anymore. This is just this one is, is for you. Um, and, and that, like, like I said, there, that was the one I did it. And I was like, do you know what? I, nothing else kind of matters anymore. Um, I did obviously I carry on swimming and I had a few good swims since then but that was the one that I was like you know what, I've, this is my middle finger to you um, and, and this is not for me this is for people kind of that believed I'd still do it um, and that was uh, it wasn't the highest like I always talk about um, we always talk about 2016 uh, when I first moved to Melbourne we were going on camps all around the world like that was that period of six months was unreal like went to Australia, went to Tenerife, we were racing in Barcelona, we did another meet as well somewhere, and like that six months, you know, leading into Olympics with Adam and working with Mel was like, that was the happiest, you know, my life's ever been, that was amazing, um, but in terms of like one moment where it was like, like, here you go, have this, it was, it was 100% that, because, you know, after really struggling, finding a love again for, for swimming through coaching, which I thought was quite interesting, like, it wasn't the love for me swimming that found it again, it was the fact that I was on poolside, you know, in in that position, and that's what found my passion for swimming again, which was which was quite quite nice, I think. Um, but yeah, yeah. one moment is hundred percent that. Yeah, and those moments are so sweet. I know exactly what moments you're talking about, and uh, yeah, they are they are brilliant. Um, it's always nice to be able it? to it's, do. It's like yeah. it's everything over the years. You know, that's that's what makes it worth it. Definitely. Um, now, because we've got a bit of trolling going on in the comments, uh, nice trolling. Um, I'm going to ask you who your favourite teammate was. I feel like I already know, but uh, no, yeah, it was uh, we, when we were at Cockermouth, we had a really good group of lads. Um, yeah. It was me, it was Luke, uh, Oliver Smith, uh, Christy, who was, who was the coach's son. Um, there was a couple of other lads who we, we always had a really good laugh with. Um, and I think you know, you know, new junior, and it's almost like. Nothing, you're just having fun. You're just yeah. training really hard. You're having a laugh and you're all racing really well. I think that was really special. Like we won a, we won a med I think we came second at nationals in the open medley relay. And it was like, there was like 40, 50 swimmers in the club. And it's like, how oh, we managed to find four lads here that have, that have done a really good job. Um, and that was, that was really special. But I think um, when I moved to Mal, um, you know, I was, I'm, I'm quite a character, I think, um, especially in the way I like to express myself. And I'm, quite, I'm very verbal if I think something, I'm going to say it. Um, and when I 
when I trained with Adam, there's a couple of other lads as well. There was a lad called Brad Lynch and a, Brad, a lad called Brad Westlake um, at Derby. Um, they they helped me come out of my shell, and that's you know who I am today is is from being around those lads and and spending time with them and and helping me come out. So you know, I always like there's two different sections of my career. It was as a junior, um, whatever. That's that was a phase, and then there was also a phase as a senior or, or transitioning into a senior. But you know. Um, I think when I started training with Adam, I think um, we we really clicked in terms of our mindset around training. Like we'd go in Australia, you know, the, the the set would be six rounds, and Adam would be like, "Oh, let's go another one," and I go, "Right, let's do another one then." And we just like some <laughs> of the stuff we've done, some of the sets we've done are absolutely just just mental. I remember we were talking about it the other the, the other week. Some of the sets we'd done, um, it was actually it was yesterday on FaceTime. We we're like, "Can you remember in 2016 when we did that?" And we'd be like, "Oh my god, yeah, it was brutal." Um, I think we just we just managed to click. We'd we'd never give in, in terms of like who's going to be harder than the other one, um, mm. because we were on the same sets most of the time, being breaststrokers. You know, that just just that that mindset. You know, we we're really engaged in that, and that's you know what our business is built off. You know, we we see this. We've got the same vision for the sport. We've got the same mindset in terms of how you got to work, how you got to do things. Uh, so yeah, for for me, you know, obviously training with Adam was was the the best in terms of who who I want to work with. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And if you get um, a relationship like that in sport, it's it's quite rare to find someone who you click like that with. So, you know, it's special. And But you, like you say, you had really good teammates all throughout, really. Yeah, I, you I've, can see I've, that. I've been so fortunate with people I've worked with. The coaches mm. I've worked with have always been amazing. The, um, the the teammates have always been with, like, e- even, like, the, the support staff, like some of the, the S&C guys and stuff like that. They've, I've always been so lucky. And, like, I've never been blessed with a team where I'm like, oh god, I really need to get out of this program. I really need to move clubs. Like I've been so so fortunate with where I've been, but um, but yeah, it's so important, isn't it? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, but it's evident, and you know the way you are with with people you now work with in t- in the pool and out of the pool. So, um, no, it's fantastic. Um, someone asked me, um, and I feel like you've touched on it, but maybe it'd be good to go into it a little bit more. Is why you retired and they put so young. Um, now, uh, I know swimming yeah. is a young sport anyway, yeah. but, you know. Um, I, I touched on it a little bit earlier, like I said there. Um, I'm not someone who will do something half and half. If I do it, I will, I will put my absolute everything into it. And that's not just with training or work. It's, it's with friends. It's with, with anything. Um, and, you know, like I said, I've, I find a massive passion for coaching. Um, you know, my, my business was really taken off. And like I said earlier, I'm, I'm not from a family where I can you know, kind of sit back and and have things given to me, you know, um, I've, I've got to support my family. Um, so it got to a point where I was like, I'm putting a hundred percent into work. I'm knackered, putting a hundred percent into training. I can't train a hundred and ten percent. Like I'm giving everything, but you know, I'm not, I'm just not at full capacity. I'm not possible to get it. Um, there was a phase last year when we were organizing the first ever camp to did with Adam. I had a family, um, uh, from overseas who were doing a camp with me and I was waking up at before 5 a.m., going to coach them, driving straight to Loughborough, missing free pool, so missing like our, pre- our stretching, diving straight in the pool, going straight to the gym, driving home, organising our camps throughout the day, driving mm. back to the pool for 2pm, coaching 2 till 3.30, driving to the oh. pool, training, going home, and I was, I was probably sleeping five hours a night, um, okay. and it's just not, it's not possible to sustain, um, no. and I've, you've got to decide, you know, what's your priority, where do you want to go? Um, and for me, the priority was work. And I remember, like, we're, we're very fortunate in, in what we do is, you know, the platform that I work with, with Adam, you know, we've, we've got the power to change the sport. We can change the whole sport in the whole world. And um, the fact that I want to swim and I think I might be able to do a good swim one day is not worth sacrificing the fact that we can change the world. <laughs> um, and I don't want to sound like like a bit of a... A uh, bit of big head or whatever, but like I said, the, the platform I work with with Adam and, and the philosophy, philosophy we've got is we believe we can change the sport. So mm-hmm. that's that's what I want to dedicate my time to. And I raced just before lockdown. Uh, we raced in Edinburgh in March. It was about three days before um, Olympic trials were cancelled. And l- like I said, swimming was everything I've ever had, and that's my passion. If I swam bad, I, I'm really going to hurt. It's really going to hurt me. I'm going to be really upset about it. Um, and I was like. I just had a very, very average swim in Edinburgh and I got out and Mel said, 
how are you feeling about that? And I was like, do you know what? I can't say what I actually said, but I was just, yeah. I, just <laughs> I really just don't care anymore. Um, right. And I'm just like, if, if that's not there, that's what I've always done it for. So, yeah. so why to keep going? Um, we went into lockdown and Mel said, you know, how are you feeling about everything? Um, uh, and I just said to her, look, I don't, I don't think I want to come back mm -hmm. here. And she said, I, I knew you were going to say this. Um, and mm -hmm. I, um, when I was having that really hard time, I said to her, we were on, um, I think we were on a, I can't remember, it might have been on training camp, but I just said to her, I, was, I just broke down. I was probably about 19. I was like, I can't do this. I don't want to do this anymore. I, I hate everything about it. I hate myself mm -hmm. for it. Um, every, there's not a single good thing at the minute. Um, and she was just like, you can't. I just can't let you stop. Um, this this in here has to come out, which, um, which I think is amazing. That's... The one thing I'll always say about Mel is she can coach people like no one else I've ever met. And she was saying, um, look, you can't. This this emotion is, is still there to come out. And it and it and that swim that I was saying, I talked about where I went to 06, was where for me it came out. And she said, mm -hmm. when you told me two years ago you wanted to stop, I couldn't let you. There's no way I could ever let you. Um, yeah. But speaking to you now, all I want to do is say, well done, go for it. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and like, do I believe I'd have... Uh, at this point in my career, do I believe I'd have won an Olympic Games? No. Do I think I'd have made a team? If I dedicated my whole life to it and and didn't work and didn't do anything, if that was possible, uh, yeah, I believe I probably could have. But you know, I could I could have trained for three years. I could have broken my ankle a week before, and I'd have I'd have lost everything that that I could have done. And for me, that risk wasn't worth taking. I'm a really I'm a logical thinker, and you know, I'm 22. Like I said, we've got this huge opportunity in front of us to change everything. Do I do that, or do I say, actually, for myself, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna try and make this team. Um, mm -hmm. and, and for me, the the uh, decision was, I, I want to change the sport. I want to support my family, and I want to, want to do some personal goals that I've got. So that that was kind mm -hmm. of it. It was a, it was an early retirement. I, I don't know, I don't know if I want to call it retirement. Um, I always, I always say, um, I always, I always joke with Adam when I was swimming bad. And I always say, when I retire, and I go, it's not retiring, it's quitting. <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah. I feel like the way I finished, and I, I feel like it was a retirement. But yeah, yeah. It, was, it was early for a swimmer, I guess, but it was the right time for me, 100%. Yeah, and and it, I, I get it. Trust me, I get it. And you definitely did retire. And it definitely, you said something before about sounding big-headed because of you want to change the world. But you got, you guys can, you know. You've got a platform, and, and why not when you can? You're passionate yeah. about it. And it's not... I understand about um, the racing and not, you know, not enjoying it and stuff like that. You know, the fire goes out sometimes. Um, mm. And for me, it did the same. I still had the fire for swimming. Yeah. I just didn't have the fire to perform myself. Yeah. Um, so was, I completely get though, that. Actually. Every time I still would go, I'd still get the, um, I'm quite an aggressive racer and trainer, especially training. Oh, I used to mm. absolutely love it. If I was in the gym, if I was training, nothing more I loved than, being in a chat with a couple of lads, chatting, like get some really dirty work done. There's nothing yeah. I love more. Um, and I still get that. Before I race, I still get that real, like, like that, that fire yeah, yeah. That pump. But then, like, but then it goes in different places. Like I said, I remember we did the race clinics last year. Uh, they were 100 swimmers. So if you think everyone comes with a mum and dad. Um, yeah. I remember when we walked into the first one, and we signed everyone in. And I walked yeah. into the introduction. I walked in and I was like, oh, my God. And, like, <laughs> and then, you know, you find a fire for a different place. Um, yes. And, like, you see 100 swimmers leave, all going. The, the thing with swimming, right, is, especially in the world now, is everything's just online. So, yeah. you know, the, do you want people to get into the pool, uh, sorry, get into the car on the way home after a training session, go on Snapchat and say, oh, we had 10-4 tonight, it was so boring. Mm. Or do you need them to get on Snapchat and say, oh, my God, I had such a fun time at training tonight swimming and coaches have to make that have to go in with that mindset um, yeah. and when we saw so many people leaving with the mindset of oh i can't wait to go back to training it was like oh my god like i've never seen that before so it was like yeah. it was when i saw the impact that had i was like well actually this is this is where the fire is going now this is mm -hmm. and like when we're you know when we're talking about our plans and you know, we had we had unreal plans this year in terms of what we're going to do with the clinics like i'd be sitting there like, right let's go come on come on let's, let's, let's do this let's do it um, slapping yourself like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's exactly the same fire but it's just in a different area yeah, yeah, yeah it's just channeling it in the right way and you've done that and you know that a lot of swimmers or uh, athletes have a period of being lost and you know when they finish like oh what do i do but it's yeah. great to see you just channel that 
right, this is what I'm doing and this is how we're doing it and let's execute it. You know, lots of people have ideas and, oh, maybe you could do this, maybe you could do that, but the ones that execute it and go for it are the ones that, you know, yeah. I, uh, I, and, and do well. Honest, I did have a really hard time with this sport. It's still, like, I'm, I'm mm. sure as you know, like, even if it's not, you know, you still swim, you still coach, you do whatever, it's not you trying to be the very best you can ever be. And that's, yep. that can be, you know, I don't know if it was for you, but it's hard to come to terms with that. Um, even if you still decide to race, even if you still decide to train, you are not going in with the mindset of every single day I'm going to be better than every other person in the whole world. And that was some, that was what gave me the fire. That's what I loved more than anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and to, to not have that was really hard. Um, and mm-hmm. channeling that into in something that's very different is hard. Mm-hmm. So, you know, <laughs> sitting behind a laptop trying to organise... Um, clinics all around the world is it's not the same um you can still do it better than anyone else in the world but it's not the same i'm gonna i'm gonna beat everyone do you know what i mean yeah uh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that, yeah that is really hard to come with and yeah. you know I, I well i hurt my shoulder but before i hurt my shoulder i was going to the gym um i was going with a lad who um who, who i've known for a few years now really really good lad i'm pretty sure he's piped up in the chat a minute ago <laughs> um, <laughs> And I train with him, and I, I love. And that's one of the only outlets that I can get where it really lets out that that fire that that's you know built in me from years and years of training. That's the only place that it lets out, hundred percent. But yeah. finding those yeah. outlets was really hard for me. Yeah, because it is important to still have those outlets. Definitely. Yeah. Um, we've got two questions left. Uh, yeah. The first one is the hardest set you've ever done. Now I know that's quite loose. Yeah, but I want to um, show. I want to add a bit more to that and say the hardest set. But when you've got out and you've gone, that was phenomenal. And it could be the whole team doing amazing, or just you. I don't oh, know if there's anything that stands out in particular. Um, is there a few? There's a few. There's right, like, okay. I think back. There's a few. That, um, I don't, I don't know if you've ever worked with Mel before. Um, or, or um, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. I have a couple of times, and I think she's brilliant. So yeah. you're lucky. And anyone lucky who's ever. Her worked with her or heard about her knows her sets are vile absolutely yeah. vile. um <laughs> some of the hardest ones um this year in australia was one of the hardest ones i've ever done it was short course it was 35 degrees which which probably made it a lot worse it was 35 yeah. degrees deep. we did uh 3100 brush stroke off 145 best average uh i was oh. going i think i was going eight on two off and the last oh. 10, and the last 10 <laughs> We obviously went all 10 on right. All out, yeah, why not? Um, <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, that was, I think the conditions made that a lot worse, but that was yes. absolutely vile. Um, yeah. What else? I've, like, all the, all the classic ones that someone would always say, like 10, 400 fresh rope, um, stuff like that. Actually, this is the hardest one I've ever done. There um, we go. In 2017, we were doing a block of work. So we did four months, January to April. It was absolutely vile. Um, every single day was something dreadful. Every Tuesday, uh, I, I did a little bit of a different variation. So I was the only 200 swimmer on this type of set, but we'd all have different little bits. So Adam might have its speed what based in the pool, I might have endurance based in the pool, but we did. Right. 60 seconds max on a watt bike, uh, straight into 450s right. off 115. Uh, mine were always all on, um, and then 100 easy. And Mel gave us a set on the Tuesday morning and said, this is the set. And it, was, it just said rounds times question mark. And I was like, oh. how, many, how many rounds? And she was like, oh, well, you can either do this set or 3250 best average off uh, 110, I think it was. I goes, no, I want to do this what mark one, but how many rounds? And she was like, if you, if you manage to get to six rounds, doing this breast stroke would be incredible. All right. So, all right. Okay, so that's 2450s and six minutes max on the bike. He goes, all right, got six rounds. I was like, I've I've got more here. Let's get let's let's go now. Oh god! Uh, you did it went, to yourself, Bernard. Yeah, but like, like, that's what I love. I love doing it. Yeah, yeah, no, I get I, it. I get it. Um, I went to seven. I went to eight, and I was absolutely battered. And she was like, "Right, let's just finish it with nine. Why not?" Um, oh. I, I'm pretty sure that every, I'm pretty sure we, I was the last one left in the pool. Everyone was trying to get in. Um, and we've been in there for like two and a half hours, and we went nine rounds in the end. So it was like. 36 50s max. That's insane. Nine, nine minutes max on the back. And that's the one that stands out to me that I'm like, yeah. that was. It, we'll I'm never not surprised. <laughs> it won't yeah. ever leave like how just brutal that was, but 100%. There's a few that stick out of it, but that, that's that's yeah. the time. Jeez, that's, that's insane. Um, 
I, I just quickly want you to touch on um, what you are doing now, because you've obviously mentioned you're doing your own stuff and you're, yeah. you know, yeah. doing camps with Adam and stuff like that. But um, just yeah. what it's called, you know, where to people to look, all that sort of stuff. Um, so I do my own stuff, which is uh, one-to-one coaching based pretty much. We do our own clinics, you know, for, um, for an occasion, I'd say, so an Easter or a Christmas or summer, we do, we do camps. Um, I've got an amazing team as well, to be fair. Like, um, the biggest thing when I started... Um, getting other coaches on to, to coach with me was I started that business to support myself to swim and I mm. wanted to support other swimmers to be able right. to swim as well um, yeah. I'm very very strict with who I work with I, you, you have to see eye to eye with me and, and I know you have, you're going to give me 11 mm. out of 10 uh, effort yeah. detail everything and I would only work with people who I'd respect in a swimming way, if that makes sense. So if I'd seen them race mm-hmm. and thought technically really good or, you know, you got you know how to you're smart with swimming. Um yeah. and and I've got with well, six of us now that coach um for that for that one to one company. Um and uh you know they're they're all they've all been there and done that, which is really important yeah. to me. Um you know, you can you can coach all you like, but until you know the feeling I think, until you've been in it and you really know how it feels, you can't you, you just can't ever um, explain how it feels. Um, I th- I th- that's the biggest thing for me. Is like you've got to have been a swimmer to really understand mm-hmm. it. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so so we do that. That's just weekends, pretty much. You know, we everyone's uh, we're always fully booked. The, the biggest problem is always that we just haven't got enough pool time. We haven't got enough coaches or, or whatever. Really? But like I said, I I won't if I unless I've seen someone who I think oh, I'd I'd love you to work with me. I'm I'm not going to just you know do it do it for the sake of it. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's Edward Baxter swimming. Then there's AP Race Clinics, which is just the camp, uh, sorry, the clinics we do kind of. Well, we have 40 fun this year. <laughs> We're going all over the world. Oh, um, it's not a good year to have 40 yeah, fun, was it? Yeah, literally. Um, so cheers, Corona. But you know, yeah. next year, hopefully we'll just be able to copy and paste what we had planned. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's with Adam, and that's that's what I touched on earlier about you know, that experience of that day. Kind mm-hmm. of hopefully just changes everyone's outlook of swimming. And, mm-hmm. and and young swimmers' opinions on swimming. Uh, and then the biggest one we've worked on lately is um, AP Plus, which is like our online um, online program, I guess. So it's built around kind of Adam's philosophy. Um, five key areas. So every, every week you get resources for swimming, strength conditioning, nutrition, psychology, and parent support. Um, and it's a two-year program. And the, the idea of that is after two years, you'll have the very best fundamental skills that you can have as a swimmer you you know in your mind you know how to race you know how to train you know how to kind of uh it's it's about the mind isn't it a sport is is mainly in the mind and it's about how Mm -hmm. to learn how to do that you know how i know the choice i need to make nutritionally um i know um kind of what i need to do in the pool and it's not you know the swim stuff isn't go and do 10 4 inch breaststroke it's what is um aerobic what does that mean johnny why am i doing 10 400s it's like yeah. Swimmers don't know. You know, you turn up to a pool and you say, right, 10 4 inches today. And all they want to know is why, why do I have to do that? And there's no explanation. Um, mm-hmm. So it's just more about kind of educating swimmers on on how, what they're doing and how they can get better at it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that was massive for us. Like, that was a really big project. We've, we've worked with like, some amazing guys who do the web stuff. They've built it from scratch. Um, mm-hmm. We've, we've got, you know, the team, I think it's 10 of us who build the content or, or work with Adam to build the content. And and we're, we're really fortunate to work with what we believe is the very best people in each area because, mm-hmm. like we were saying, we talked about the world-class programme earlier. So 40 or 60 swimmers a year get picked mm-hmm. to get the resources. Yeah. But these resources are there and they're available. So why mm-hmm. should only 60 people from one country get them? Why can everyone in the world not access something that's going to make them faster at swimming? If someone in America gets faster at swimming, so everyone in Britain has to get faster as well because if we want to win, like yeah. that's good. People need to get faster, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and it's just it's so frustrating for us that you know there's there's so many amazing coaches that don't have the voice to get it out. There's so many amazing different people. We just needed to build something that everyone can get all the info they need. So that's that was the biggest mm-hmm. project for us, and we've got some uh, we've got some really exciting stuff planned and some really big stuff which I'd love to tell you all about, but. I'd, I'd talk before you I can't I'd, I'd, damn I'd, it yeah. <laughs> um, that's I'd, fine I'd, I'm talking but yeah we're like I said earlier we want to change the sports I mean um, not just yeah. the UK in the world and, and we've got the platform to do it yeah 
And and what a great goal to have and from where you've come and your own experiences and what you said before about having the empathy towards swimming. Just, you know, you've had the whole package, you've, got, you've lived through it and now it's time to pass that on yes. in a positive way, which is fantastic. Um, one more question. One piece of advice for your younger self starting your swimming journey again? Um, it's, it's, it's all well and good saying it'll be all right, isn't it? But yeah. 17, 18 years old, if the world's coming around you, it's not going to be all right. Um, yeah. Uh, just enjoy it. Do you know what I mean you'll yeah. never you'll never live it again? Like, mm-hmm. like I said, I've I've been to the furthest country away from the UK. I've been to I've been to Samoa. I've spent three months in Australia. I've, do you know what I mean I've I've mm-hmm. I've lived such an amazing life because of swimming. And was I to, oh, I've just got to swim. I've got to be the fastest I can be. And you know I've, do you know what I mean I've spent mm-hmm. age eight, seventeen to twenty one traveling the world training as hard as I can with the best team in the world, with the best friends in the world. Like, did I, did I enjoy that enough? Um, probably, I think, like I said, 2016, 100% I enjoyed it enough and that's some of the best times I've ever swam. But past that, did I get too serious and, and think about it too much? Probably, yeah. Um, so probably enjoy it all the time. Just enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, Ed, I feel like I could just talk to you about all sorts. <laughs> uh, I feel like we've only scratched the surface. Um, but you've been absolutely amazing. I think there's loads in there that people will have really enjoyed, listened to, been interested in, and can learn from, really. Um, so. so thank you for thanks for joining me um, That's right. tonight on the, on the episode. No, it's been great. Um, and good luck with everything. And everyone will be already know who you are and what you're doing. But if you don't, check it out, definitely. Um, and I'll speak to you soon, I'm sure. Cheers. Cheers, Lauren. Thanks, Ed. See you later. Bye. Bye, everyone.